Hi, and welcome to Stephen Helwig Talks Tech. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to install Windows 11 on a Hyper-V virtual machine. Now, a lot of folks are interested in getting their hands on the early bits of Windows 11, but I can understand if you are a little bit cautious about putting it on your main machine. Whether it's your work machine or your or the machine you use predominantly at home, Windows 11 is still early release software, and as such, there are bugs. However, you can use a virtual machine to test out the early bits without compromising your existing system. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to install Windows 11 on your Windows 10 machine. Now, I'm gonna be using a Windows 11 machine to do that, but the steps are gonna be exactly the same using Hyper-V Manager. So I have a request. Can you hit that subscribe button for me? We have just reached 600 subscribers here on Stephen Helwig Talks Tech, and we would love to get to 1,000 in our first year here on YouTube. So hit the subscribe button, give it a like, give it a share, and leave a comment below about what you liked about the video, what was interesting, if you have any questions, or you have any suggestions for future videos. Okay, let's get to installing Windows 11. The first thing we'll need to do to get started is to install Hyper-V on Windows 10. Now, if you've already started Hyper-V, you can skip to the next section, but if you haven't yet, uh, there's a link that I've put in the description below that will take you to the docs.microsoft.com page, which gives you the instructions to install Hyper-V. I'll go through them very quickly. Uh, there are multiple options to install Hyper-V, and it's giving you three options here to do that. And for me, the easiest one is to run a PowerShell script that will do this for you. Please note that you have to run it uh, as an administrator. So if you just hit the uh, Windows key and type in PowerShell, and you'll see the Windows PowerShell option, you can just right click and hit Run as Administrator, or you can select Run as Administrator from here. Once you do that, it's gonna pop up a little box and you just click yes. And then from there, you can copy and paste the this into your PowerShell window. So you just right click to paste and then click run. Give it a second, it will run through. And once it's done, you will go ahead and reboot. Now, in order to create the VM in Hyper-V, you'll need a Windows 10 ISO. Microsoft makes this pretty easy. You can go to a website here to download a media creation tool, and this tool will allow you to create Windows installation media. Now, most of the time I use it to generate a um, USB flash drive that I would use to load Windows 10. But right now, I'm gonna actually use it to generate an ISO file. So once it's downloaded, you can just open it here. You'll approve the security pop-up and it will pop up a window that will uh, save for a little bit getting a few things ready. Now, once it goes through the screen, you're gonna approve a uh, EULA and then you'll go in to select your options. Okay, so here are the applicable notices and licensing terms. Uh, you can read it if you so choose. I'm gonna click accept. It'll go through the process of saying getting a few things ready again. And then from there, we'll choose what kind of uh, installation media we wanna create. Here's where we select what we want to do. We can upgrade this current PC or we can create our installation media. I'll select create installation media and click next. And then from here, we can select our language, edition of Windows and our architecture. Now, if you see this checkbox that is checked here, use the recommended options for this PC, will automatically select the options best for the machine that you're working off of. So it's selected all the right options for me. If I uncheck this box, you'll notice that I now have the option to select, for instance, 32-bit Windows or um, um, it, only Windows is the addition or select potentially a different language. Um, so I'll select those, I'll click next, and then here's where we can select to create an ISO file. So I select ISO and next, and then it's gonna give me the option of saving it to my machine. Now, I've obviously already created one. In fact, I've created two, so I'm not gonna go through this process again, but um, if I was to save this and click next, it would create the ISO file. Now that we've generated our ISO file, we are going to open Hyper-V and create our virtual machine. So if you just hit the start key on your Windows machine and type in Hyper-V, you should see a couple options come up here for Hyper-V. Now I'm gonna select Hyper-V Manager. There's an easy way using Hyper-V Quick Create, but I wanna do a little bit more uh, selection when I go to create this VM. So I'm gonna select Hyper-V Manager, move this over here. And we are going to, instead of saying quick create, we're gonna click new and virtual machine. Okay, and you should receive a pop-up like this, which is the virtual machine wizard. 
Okay, so we're gonna click next and type in the name of our virtual machine. So I'm gonna type this Windows 11 on YouTube since I'm doing this for the YouTube video. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. When we get to specify generation, I'm gonna select second generation and it'll, so it'll um, support some additional options here, but Windows 10 and Windows 11 support generation two. And then for memory, I'm gonna use 4096, which is um, four gigs of memory. You'll have, you can choose an option that's supported for your machine and I'm gonna uncheck use dynamic memory, okay? Next, when it comes to configuring network, I'm gonna use the default switch. And for the virtual hard disk, it currently stores it in C users public documents virtual hard disk. That's fine with me, I'm okay with the name. I'm just gonna adjust the size down here to 64 gigs. Now, once again, you can adjust the size based on the size you have on your machine, um, but I wouldn't go too much lower than 64, maybe 32, right? Because Windows does take up some space on its own. All right, when I, next I'm gonna go to installation options and this is where I'm gonna select that ISO file. So I'm gonna say install an operating system from boot, a bootable image and then I'm gonna go into that downloads folder and select the ISO that I created. Then I'm gonna click next. You can review the information and click finish. Here it'll run through some options and it will configure your machine. Okay, so the machine is configured here. Uh, next, we're gonna go over some additional settings. Now, before we get going, we are going to adjust some settings here on the virtual machine that we just created. So I'm gonna select this Windows YouTube VM and I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm gonna adjust two settings. The first of which is the secure boot. And I wanna enable the TPM. There's been a lot in the news around Microsoft saying that Windows 11 is only gonna support TPM 2.0. Um, I have a TPM chip in this desktop and I want the VM to be able to support it as well. I don't know if this is gonna really matter, um, but I, I've done it with it on, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it when I uh, on this one as well. And the other one for me is I wanna increase the amount of processors, virtual processors that the uh, machine has access to. So I'm gonna increase that to two and I'm gonna click apply. Okay, now everything else is fine. I've looked at all the other settings here, nothing else to do. So now I can say I'm gonna start this machine. Actually, I'm gonna to connect to it first. So when that opens up, uh, and before I click start, I'm just gonna hold down any key on my keyboard and click start. And that's because I want it to boot into the Hyper-V UEFI BIOS. Uh, if you don't do that, you will get an error. There is a known issue with this, um, and I'm not gonna go through it right now, but uh, I was able to figure it out. So just hold down like the S button on your keyboard when you click that start button. And this will bring you to a very familiar screen, which is the Windows setup screen. So this is gonna look very similar to what you would go through if you were uh, starting up a brand new Windows machine. Now you will need a license key in order to do this. So if you haven't got a license key, make sure you grab one, um, but you, if you have an MSDN subscription or an existing license key that has additional PCs that you can set up, you can leverage that here. So we're gonna click next and click install now, and it's gonna start the setup process. And at some point it will ask us for that license key, which is now. So we're gonna type this in and we'll be right back. So now that we've put in our license key, we're gonna accept the license terms and click next. And then we're gonna to go to custom install down here, select our drive that's been created and click next. From here, it's gonna go through and it's going to start the installation process of Windows. So we'll come back when uh, it, this is complete and we'll go through logging into Windows for the first time and choosing our settings. Now that the installation process is done, we're just gonna go through the general setup process here. So we're gonna, it's gonna select uh, United States for me. That's my region. Of course, you may be in a different region. So select the region that makes sense to you. I'm gonna select the US keyboard and I'm gonna skip adding an additional keyboard layout. First, it'll ask us if it want, we wanna set it up for personal use or for an organization. Now, if you plan on logging in with a Hotmail or Outlook.com account, then you'll use personal use. If you plan on logging in with a corporate account, such as if you use Office 365 or a .edu, then you'll wanna set up for an organization. I'll be logging in with a personal account, so I'm gonna select set up for personal use and click next. And then the next thing I wanna do is type my account in. and put in my password. And 
click Next. It'll ask me if I want to create a pin. I'm going to say yes, because that will make it a lot easier for me to log into the VM rather than having to enter my password every time. So I'm going to click yes to create a pin and put in a pin here. And now it's going to ask us to choose our privacy settings. Now, um, the one thing to note is in order to get into the Windows Insider program, which is what we will need in order to install Windows 11, you must send both required and optional diagnostics data. So it makes sense to leave this checked. Now the other boxes you can uncheck. This is a VM, so location doesn't matter. I don't really care about tailored experiences. I don't really care about find my device. I'm not gonna be inking or typing and I'm not gonna be doing any advertising. So for me, diagnostic data is the only one I will check, but these are your privacy settings. So uh, check on or off what you think is important. I'm going to select accept. And then I'm going to skip this part because uh, it's not that important for me. And I'm also going to skip this part as well. Uh, I'm not going to set up OneDrive right now. I can do that when I get into the PC. So I will just click only save files to this PC. I will not set up Office 365 right now. and I'm not gonna set up Cortana right now. So once we've made it through the litany of uh, options that it wants us to set up, it will get us into uh, our PC. So it's gonna get a couple things ready and we should be able to log in next. Now that we have connected to our PC, uh, you can see it's loaded here. The first thing it's gonna ask us is what size screen do we want? Um, I'm gonna leave it as the default here and click connect. Now, a lot of times when you do that, it will put the virtual machine connection into what is called enhanced mode. And then you'll get this screen and you'll think, uh, what happened to my computer? What happened to my VM? Well, what's happening is because you're using Windows Hello, it's actually a feeling like you're almost remoting into the machine as a uh, external user and it's blocking your access to the machine. So uh, enhanced mode doesn't really work that well. So I actually am gonna select basic session. When we click basic session, it'll reconnect to our machine and you'll see that we have access to everything again. Now, if we actually wanna change the screen size, for instance, if I wanna use more screen real estate, we actually change it locally on the machine and it will adjust the size of the virtual machine window that we're connected to. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to display settings and I'm gonna go down and select a little bit larger screen size. And I'm gonna click keep changes and I'm gonna close it. So now you see we have a little bit more screen real estate. We can also maximize this here and see a little bit more of the screen real estate. Now if I really wanted to use the entire screen, I could go in and select my full screen resolution here, which is 1920 by 1080, but not gonna do that for now. Okay, so now that we are in Windows, the next thing we need to do is actually join the Windows Insiders program. So I'm gonna go into the start menu here and type settings. And when I go into settings, I'm gonna go down to updates and security. And I'm gonna scroll down again and go to Windows Insiders. Now, if you've not joined the Windows Insiders program before, you'll get this little pop-up that says get started. You'll click get started here, and this is gonna load, and you can link an account. So I'm gonna click the account that I'm logged into the machine with. You can also select a different account if you wanted to, and click continue. Once that's done, it's going to give me some options of what release channel that I want to participate in. Now, I want to participate in the dev channel. Generally, I would participate in the beta channel. However, even though it says that these have Windows 11 builds, Microsoft hasn't released Windows 11 to the beta channel as of the recording of this video. Now, when this releases, that might be out on the beta channel, I'm not sure. So for now, I'm going to select the dev channel and click confirm. Uh, once I do that, I'm going to click confirm again. If you feel like reading the privacy statement and program agreement, feel free. And then that is going to force me to restart my machine. So I'm going to click restart and it's going to restart the VM. Okay, once our PC is rebooted, we can go ahead and log into the machine using our PIN. And if you reconnect it once again in enhanced mode, just remember to reconnect in basic mode. I've increased my screen size a little bit here, um, but just to give you a little bit more screen real estate. And then we're gonna go back into our Windows settings 
and scroll back down to updates and security. And, for, and now we're gonna select check for updates. As you can see, it's come back with a lot of updates now that we're in the preview program. And one of those updates is the Windows 11 Insider Preview. Uh, it gives it uh, the release number and also some things that says co-release at the end. Okay, so we are gonna let this download and install. And once we do that, uh, we should be back to Windows 11 on this VM. Now that uh, our Windows update has completed, now we need to restart the machine so that it can install Windows 11. So we're just gonna click in Restart Now, and our virtual machine will go and restart. Now this will take a little bit, so we'll come back once it's restarted, and we should be into Windows 11. So as you can see, we have a fresh copy of Windows 11 here installed on this virtual machine. You can see up here it says Windows 11 YouTube on my desktop. So this is a fresh copy of Windows 11 for you to go and play around with. Uh, if you have a Windows 10 machine and you need to have a stable copy of Windows 10, but you really want to get your hands on Windows 11, the early releases of Windows 11, this is a great way to do it. Thanks again for joining me here on Stephen Hellwig Talks Tech. I hope you enjoyed that look at how you can install a Windows 11 VM on your machine using Hyper-V. If you've yet to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button now. Hit the bell if you want to get notified about future videos. Le uh, hit the like button and leave a comment below about what you liked, uh, what if you have suggestions for future videos, or if you didn't understand something and you wanted me to clarify. I'll also be working on a video shortly with my first look and impressions of Windows 11. This is gonna be a little bit longer video where I'm gonna go through all the features that I find interesting in Windows 11. There's a ton of UI changes, and so I'm excited to come back and show you Windows 11 and give you my preview of it. Okay, thanks for joining me, bye.